Well, good morning, everyone. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I've got to do bees today. It's the 9th of March, and once again, it is overcast and cool. Well, folks, welcome back here to Southeast Louisiana where we have a beautiful camellia blooming. I love that camellia, it's my favorite. We got azaleas beginning to bloom. Lord petalums are blooming. We got wisteria starting to pop out. The pears are wrapping up. Plums are wrapped up. Don't know when the orange blossoms are gonna come out, but the blueberries are blooming. So there's a lot going on. And I'm telling you, there are some serious well, folks around here called dewberries. They're a variety of blackberry. They're the early ones. They got they they're very viney and they grow the bigger berries. Very very delicious. They are blooming everywhere, and the blackberries will follow up. But the dewberries, as they call them, uh, they really do put out a lot of nectar. And last couple years, we've had some phenomenal uh, dewberry, blackberry, whatever you want to call them, blooms, and uh, they have really stoked the hives. I got a bunch of junk out, ready to go. We got some things to do today. Uh, it's it's just gonna be a, a a rough day in the bees and uh today we knew it was not gonna rain but it was supposed to be cloudy and cool and this is the only day i have so i have to get stuff done so the plan is to do some splits and i usually do splits uh the last couple years on video you've seen the majority of the splits i do i do above excluders um and i like to put queen cells in i have queen cells in my builder probably gonna make a few nukes today too so let's get busy all right, suited up, ready to go. I will try to explain what we're gonna do today as we get into the bees. I am on the GoPro 8 again, so I don't know how it's gonna go. Splits, that's on the agenda, and I'll explain how I'm doing them as we go. Oh, I forgot my Super DFM, that's going on today too. Um, I will, on the doubles that I don't have listed as split, I will flip them up just to be sure we don't have swarm cells underneath or swarm cells starting, because then they'll need split. And we probably got about a dozen to split. But I don't think I'll split them all. I think I'll pull nukes off some. So while my bees, I tell you, are feisty this time of year, this weather has not helped at all. And the amount of rain over the few days hasn't helped. They actually get better as March goes on. They're usually getting pretty good by this time. But, you know, we just haven't had the weather. So like I said, this one isn't a splitter. But what I'm going to do is I want to simply lift it up and see if there's queen cells under the second box because that's where they're going to build them if they build them now i'm banking on that my assessments were good enough that i read the colony right and they don't but that means nothing remember how i do this is not a how-to this is what i do so let's do it oh this was a single i can feel it it's very light no maybe it wasn't all i know is i had it marked as light and it is light and there's some cups. We'll check them. We'll take a quick peek. With the light today, it's hard to see. I doubt there's anything in them. Usually these are just dry. They are. Nothing to worry with on these. I do crush them all. Um, and we move on. Done deal. So they're populating six frames in the bottom. It's like four in the top. So they got room to grow. This will be a honey producer. This will simply get a super. Speaking of supers, you might say, well, Mike, why don't you just super them if they're too big? Because we have about two months of swarm season before we get any type of really good flow that we can produce honey off of. I will super toward the end of March. I've started doing that again, but we got to prevent swarming. The flow just never seems to be enough to really push them up into supers. They tend to swarm. Um, just isn't. I, I, I've explained it year after year. It's just the way it is. Even if I put supers on last week, at the beginning of March, I'd say probably seven to ten of them will build swarm cells anyway. The flow is just, like I explained one day, up and down, slow. It's not a full-on flow where they just begin to fill up and hoard. They fill up enough to sustain a swarm and they leave. Same thing on this one. We're going to do the same. I'm going to do this real quick with these hives and then we're going to look into a split and possibly pull a nuke off of number five. Yep, very small, no worries. Why didn't y'all remind me to put Super DFM on that first one? Super DFM is kind of new for me, so I'm having to get used to it. 
but y'all didn't help me any on that one. I get regularly when I do the Super DFM questions on what it is. It is a probiotic, just like probiotic that we would have as humans. It's a probiotic for them for gut health. All right, guys, here we go. Let's do a split. How I'm going to do my split is I'm going to go through and I'm going to look in the top box, and if I find the queen, I'm going to isolate her, put her in a cage, and I'm going to isolate her. I like to find my queen. As I go through each frame, and here the bees go, they're starting to get on this camera. May have to switch, but as I go, I'll shake each frame down in if I don't see her. Just to be sure in case I missed her, I get her in the bottom. And I'm gonna put a queen excluder on. And if there's not a lot of brood in the top as I'm going, I will pull some from the bottom. And I will try to equalize it and actually more so put a little more brood in the side that's gonna be queenless at the split. And that's what I'm gonna do. What I would normally do is do this the day before. Because when you do a dozen of them by yourself on your Saturday morning or your Friday afternoon, you know, it tends to be a little bit of work. And so what I like to do is come in the next day. So do the hard work the first day, come in the next day and just pull the box off, let it settle down for a few hours, throw a queen cell in there, and they're off and going. A couple of things have changed this year. I couldn't, yesterday it rained, so even if I could get off, which I could have, but it was pouring the whole day. Today, awful weather. Tomorrow, I can't do it. Today's my only day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm out here this morning. It's probably about 9, 9.30. I'm gonna, these bees are gonna be ferocious. This weather is awful. But I'm going to go and grin and bear it and separate them. And then later this afternoon, so everything kind of calmed down. Then I can go pop the tops off, leave them for an hour. And if I've got cells in my builder, we're gonna put cells in. Another thing that's different is usually I get cells either out of a builder that I've got the cells are about 14, you know, uh, say 12 to 14 days old, they're ready to emerge. These are gonna be only about 10 days old. So I'm not gaining as much time and they're gonna be very fragile and 10 days old from egg to cell. So that's something that's different. I don't have readily, you know, I don't have 15 cells sitting here ready to go in. So we'll let them settle for about an hour or two and then we'll put cells in them. So it's gonna be a three-step process all in one day. So I gotta get busy, but it's gonna get ugly. Don't get ugly, it's already, they're already hitting you bad. Um, yeah, we gotta get busy. Look, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the camera on for now. Even if it gets really bad on you, I'll puff some smoke over every so often and I'll change cameras later. But once I get started, I don't wanna stop because this gets really hectic. Here goes nothing, folks. This is a big colony. The bigger they are, they seem to be more irritated in weather like this because they're mostly home. There's just not a lot of flight activity on weather like this. Let's get some smoke to them. They're already on you guys. They just, I don't know. It's the strangest thing with that camera. Look under here. They look okay. I see some cups, but they look okay. Here they go. Sorry about that. Let's get done and I'll... Let's get done and I'll switch out. Smoke doesn't deter them, nothing. So what we're going to do is stick this over here. This is just gonna be my day, folks. That's what our second box is for. Our second box is for the frame. That we take the beans off of. I don't have a lot of time, I just gotta get moving so I, I don't look that quickly. I take a quick glance and that's it. I'm gonna take a picture of the stingers in this thing by the speaker. And I promise you, they're not on me like they're on you. I promise. Ridiculous, guys. What kind of sizes are you looking for? Okay. 
If you're gonna go up there, I'm gonna call her real quick and let her know to hold on to it. We have one up there. All right, I'll, 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 can I text this number if it's not available? Okay. All right, I'll do that. Yes, ma'am, you have a good one. Hey, you have a half gallon still? Hold on, there's a lady coming to get it. She's All right, let me get back to the meeting. You can even see them in the frames. They're calm until you move. taking longer because I'm explaining it going through it it's usually not going to take this long and I move all the other frames in back into the box we'll put this on here through and explaining what I'm doing. You guys have seen that split many times. A lot of you do it. Um, I find it good when I have a bunch to do to just go through, like I said, one day, get them all done like that. I'll go much faster. I'm actually going to turn the camera off and work through a few. And uh, when I go to make my nuke, I'll show you that. And if I find any queen cells, I'll definitely show you. But what I'm going to do is get them all set up. And I find it easier if I just go through, do it, get it over with. I can go through in about, I don't know, within 10 minutes a hive at the most so if everything goes smooth and off we go i'm back really quick next hive over actually all right let's they don't like me sliding it that's for sure but let's look oh we're too late we got swarm cells so we're going to be doing a split well there you go that's the other part we're going to do we're going to split one of the swarm cells so these bees need to be split now this one here it was broken open this one was broken open by me, so but it's still a larvae. Oh, it's yeah, it's still curled up. Let's see what this other one. See, there's one there. That's a finished cell. That's uh, and this one here is about finished. That one was ripped open. That one was damaged. See, I've dented it, so I'm gonna. This one here has got larvae in it, so yeah, they're ready to swarm. So let's see, one, two, three on the fourth frame. In the eighth frame, I'll leave that one. They might can finish that one, and we're gonna split this colony. I don't want to damage my cells. I know they're on the fourth and eighth frame, so I gotta be very careful. Cause those are my new queens for this. Now I can work them, get them out of there. I want to find my queen in this case. I don't have to. But it's nice to put the cells where they belong and the queen where she belongs. Folks, I went through the top and didn't see her. Went through the bottom really quick and was going to just say, hey, I'll put a cell in each box. And I spotted her on here. There she is right there. Now, I don't even have to catch her. I'm just going to move her. She's, there she goes, laying an egg. Look at there. Laying an egg. First time I ever got it uh, on YouTube. I've seen them do it. But I've never had a chance to capture it on YouTube. Cool. There she is, she's done. Alright, let me get her in this. All I had to do was see her and I can just put her in the bottom, leave the cells in the top and move the boxes. That's it. That's all we gotta do. So that's all I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna give them some nurse bees.
me a little while to do that. I, I can't stand letting them get to that point where I have to go hunt the queen. Now I don't have to find the queen. I did have cells on two frames. I could have easily just put one in each one uh, but I didn't want to take any chances if I could so I went through and uh, went through the top didn't see her went through the bottom didn't see her pulled the first frame off the top and there she was grabbed her up just had to see her put her in the bottom move her. I move her because I want to simulate the swarm. The other bees will have plenty. I, I shook plenty of nurse bees. So we got brood in both of them. They've got young brood in there. Should the storm cells not be any good, we'll watch them. If they fail, we'll put them back together. Easy enough. Not a big deal. I'd rather split them on my own terms, but if they've got a swarm cell in there, that's fine too. Uh, hey, they're split now. We've made increase. This one will need a second deep, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll probably do that uh, this week. I'll just go throw a second deep on there. They definitely will need one because all the field bees are going to come back here. And what can happen sometimes, in my experience, is they can still swarm if they've got multiple cells. So if I find like six or eight cells, a lot of times I try and split them up between colonies or take down some of the uglier ones and only leave two to three at the most in a big colony that's going to swarm when I do a split like that because what I have found is you'll still get a swarm. They'll still swarm with the, with the uh, unmated queen. Off they go. Uh, the virgin queen will be gone with them. They'll take two or three of them. They'll leave two or three behind and it'll be all over. So I do know that really two cells is great if I see really nice cells and then call it a day. Leaving two in there, I should be all right. Um, but I do need to get a deep on them soon. Well, folks, the bees are just as feisty. It's not feisty. They're really not stingy, stingy terrible. But anyway, they just don't like the cameras. Um, they're on me now. Uh, they aren't happy with me right here. But they've been pretty calm for most of this inspection. Another problem is, is when I'm doing this, I'm looking for the queen so I don't use a lot of smoke. So now I can start using some smoke since I have found her. So now I'm going to put some smoke to them. I'm going to get them smoked out of here. The top box, calm as can be. This one was calm. Fired up this camera and they got crazy. They're camera shy, I think. And I might actually make a nuke out of this. I might take a frame from her and make a nuke. Because you know what? She's going to explode on me anyway. Got my pro nuke here. It's got a fret, like I showed you. I think I showed you a foundation. I've got a foundation, a drawn. I'm gonna put a frame of brood, the bees, and some food. Preferably something with pollen. Let's see what this one's got. It's got food. It's got food and a little bit of pollen. It's got plenty of nurse bees. I know where the queen's at. So look, we're gonna stick this on the edge. Take this brood frame, it's got larvae and stuff in it. I don't want them to make cells, but I'm going to give them a cell later this evening. But I want to have something in case I hadn't even seen if my cells are all good yet. They were pretty good the other day. And I'll probably give them another brood frame. That'll, that'll knock her back quite a bit. What we'll do is we'll shake these off. So we're going to do two things with this. We're going to make a nuke and we're going to split them. I'm going to take something else from her. And she can lay eggs. And I want to slow her down. I'm going to take a cat brood. That will build up this nuke really quick. So right here. Perfect. Alright, so there's our nuke. Two frames of brood. One food and pollen. One um, foundation. And one drawn. And I'll probably put the queen cell in a little later on and what ha what will happen is these nukes will get a small feeder bottle on them so let's give them some more nurse bees I'm gonna give them some nurse bees there we go so we broke her down quite a bit giving her some drawn foam
take some more bees from her and give them to the top box uh, whenever we move it. This, this queen has her nest spread all the way out too. We give her a foundation. And that's gonna be it. We're gonna take this new. We're gonna give them a no vent option, open the front, and move them out of the way. I'm gonna go move them to a pallet. We'll give them a queen later. Let's get some smoke on them. And I might have broken them down a little more than I needed to, but it's not gonna hurt because she's a machine. Let's let her go. She's another one of those Italians. I tell you this, this is from the beekeeper that uh, Dirt Rooster uses up there where he had that massive swarm. I gotta watch her come out. There she goes, gone. She went down in there. There she goes. I don't know if I got it on camera. I'm moving all over the place. Got an scooter that I didn't get clean. Come on, bees, move out of the way. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna let them repopulate this top. Be ready to go tonight. This has got a little more honey than I'd like, but. Uh, all right. And these are here, so we'll make a nice split out of them. Well, folks, it's about dark. <laughs> I'm not going to have time to move my tops off the excluders tonight. I'm going to have to take a couple hours tomorrow. I think I can get that in. But what it's time to do now is get some cells in because I did make four nukes. We're going to go in this cell builder and see if we can find some cells. Now there were some in there. I grafted 30 and there were uh, 24 in there and really one of them wasn't that good. I think it was abandoned so it was really like about 23 is what I counted. Let's see if they kept them in there. And I'll talk about the cloak board. This is going to be a dual video. I'm going to be shooting footage to pull these cells and put them in these nukes. And I'm also gonna be shooting footage on how the cloak board runs and make a separate video for that. So here we go. Now these are some ferocious bees. <laughs> They're just not nice. So when I go in there to get these cells, it's gonna be nasty. So we need one, two, I need six cells at a minimum. And then I'm gonna need about five more tomorrow. Now these are young cells. I need to be careful with them. Very, very young. What's nice about what I see is uh, slip royal jelly inside the top. Very good sign. I would do this without gloves, but I don't feel like getting stung up real bad. They say you want a lot of bees on your builder. You got a lot of bees in that builder. I promise you. Now my larger colonies, I am going to use cell protectors only because of uh, a lot of field bees. The nukes, not so much. Let's uh, let's get these nukes done. So I got a foundation in there, and I will be giving them some food here pretty soon. That one's going to need a frame of honey. Here's the foundation frame, maybe. Nope, that's got brood, so here's a brood frame. That's where I'm gonna put myself. Now see that, I hope you can see that. I drive it in brood, I stick it there like so. I put it in there. Carefully, because these are very, very fragile ones. Then it goes in between these two. Just like so. And we leave this thing alone for the next, well this one's going to be left alone for two and a half weeks. And I need to open the entrance to this. There we go. Uh, they will be getting some food here pretty soon. I'll put this right here. There you go. Put this cell right in here. Now these haven't been queenless that long, so I'm kind of concerned about them. I probably should have put a protector on there, but we'll find out. Let's go put some in the big colonies, and I'm going to come back and do these. I want these bees to calm down. All right, got a brick standing up, and add cell on my notes there. They haven't been queenless that long. I like them to be queenless. Somewhat amount of time, but I'm out of time, guys. And tomorrow is going to be so difficult. 
I've got a, and this is the original location of the colony, so I don't want to. I got a lot of field bees, so there could be some aggressiveness. That's why I want the cell protector on here. So I'm going to put it in a cell protector, and of course that's nothing more than sticking in here. And actually, these make it easy to. I just hate how they go down in there. You got to be so gentle there. I just get it just where the cup is in there. So that's all it'll go, and that's all it needs to go. Push that in there, straighten the cell up, leave it like so. I mean, as long as you don't tear it open, it's fine. Slide that in, we're good to go. That's it. These are off for the day, folks. I'm sorry. Sorry for you and for me because it's painful. Well, there you go, folks. That was not a how I do and not a how to. I don't know what was. It's been a rough day. I'm behind, but I'm going to have to wiggle a day off somehow, and uh, which I will. I think Monday I'm going to have to take off, check the weather. I got to get some deeps out here on some of these singles that I split. And yeah, you leave a colony in the same spot and all those workers come back. It's hectic. All the, all the um, nukes now have queens in them, queen cells in them, and the two colonies that I split without using excluders uh, they have queen cells in them with protectors I did put a protector in that one because um, they're fresh out of the nest uh, and they're kind of rambunctious uh, but that's it so the rest are just on the brood I've had great success with them just putting them in the brood like that you can just as easily drop them in between the frames but I, I like doing it on the brood um, if I had a bunch of colonies and was raising a bunch of nukes which could be a possibility one day uh, Hey, I'd, I'd drop them in between the frames, but uh, yeah, so we got all that done. The splits I did where I had to put cells in were ones that I had, um, you know, cell, uh, queen cells started from swarming, things like that, or whatever the case was. And I split them just by looking in, finding the queen, moving the queen, or leaving her there and moving one off. And the one that I moved off or left without a queen, I put the cell in. I still got to move all my ones off of excluders tomorrow and I'll add cells to those. That's another five or six I think I got to do. I don't know. And then um, we'll have our increases made. One thing is when I move off of excluders, I don't like to smoke a lot in the top if I pop the top. I don't like to smoke a lot at all because I don't want to run bees one way or the other out of where they've gathered since I've got them gathered above an excluder. Let's move some bees.
So the method to my madness on the boxes and where I put them and all, what I have seen in the past, when I used to do walkway splits really, I would have a problem with um, having all the boxes lined up and I did multiple splits next to each other, they tended to not queen as good or requeen or get mated. And I also often wonder if that's because it's just a whole bunch of same colored boxes and uh, I, you know, and they go to the wrong colony. And I've put spray paint marks, stickers, everything you can think of to try and stop and it didn't work. Then I began to try and be careful where I put them or leave the queen in the same place. The danger with that is I got to get a second on those queen boxes ASAP. I'll do that while the bees settle down before I put cells in, but they will continue to just keep growing. And so when I leave the queen in the same spot, they grow fast and I'm back to swarm prevention in another three, four weeks. But then when I move a box off, where depending where I put it, I gotta watch that I don't have them in a stack. So I try to put them on the ends. I try to put them in distinct locations or in the case of that one, since there's one next to it, uh, that's requeening as well. I turn it around and make her come out the backside, and that has worked really good. So, and that's old school walkaway split stuff right there, where you flip the hive around. I really like to leave the queen in the same spot, but I'm gonna try something a little different this season. Maybe see if I can slow a couple of them down. So, we'll say, folks, we we uh, if it was an eventful day. In the end, the bees are strong and they're growing. And some of the singles that I put boxes on ten days ago are filling up. I broke nukes off. Um, got four nukes, as you saw. But I broke those off and broke those hives down a little bit, those colonies, break them down some. Um, I'll have more cells in the, in the, what you call it, cloak board again next week. And uh, we'll have more queens coming out. Whew, how many did I split so far? So I split two, three, I think I split about eight, six or eight, and uh, split off some nukes. So we're doing all right. Uh, filling the stands, it's all, you know, gotta get that increase first. That's my first order of business is make increases you know, we had some dead outs early last year. Usually I have them around October. I had them early. I had them in, in August, September. But the drought with the uh, situation with the nectar and everything else, uh, it just was a mess. We lost like six or seven of them. Um, then I combined three or four, and then I had a couple weak ones coming out of winter. So we got to make those up. We got to make those up. We need to make up at least 10. And uh, we've just about done that. So that'll be good. And then we'll start building them up out of their boxes into their supers. Another three weeks hopefully we're filling supers up with some early spring honey and that's it I'm gonna call it a day it's been a long day for me fortunately only a short video for you or probably a long video but I do appreciate all y'all watching hope you enjoyed this video I'm gonna call it a night it's Barry's best honey I'm Mike I do bees y'all have a wonderful evening and may God bless you we'll see y'all later